Spacecraft development is definitely the riskiest and sometimes most explosive business. SpaceX's Starship prototype spacecraft is an outstanding example of that. The fully reusable launch system for eventual Moon and Mars trips is no stranger to explosions, ruptures, and failed landings. Notably, this week, in the midst of an important static fire test campaign in Boca Chica, Texas, an unexpected fireball briefly engulfed the base of SpaceX's huge Starship booster, equipped with an array of 33 Raptor engines. Even SpaceX CEO Elon Musk admitted that Starship is a hard, 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 hard project. In another case, he also said it's an insanely hard problem. In fact, there had to be a lot of other issues that Starship was dealing with, which is why Elon Musk had to talk about it so much. So in today's episode, the Alpha Tech team decided to find out and analyze in detail the challenges that the SpaceX team has to overcome in the process of building Starship. What is the first problem that is most easily seen in Starship's development? We should probably take a step back to better understand what SpaceX is trying to do with Starship. The vehicle is in the second stage of a launch system that includes a large booster named Super Heavy. With its Falcon 9 program, SpaceX had demonstrated the ability to launch and land a rocket vertically. But the real trick comes with Starship, specifically bringing it back safely from orbital velocity and through the atmosphere so it can be launched with minimal refurbishment a short time later. At 120 meters, the stacked Starship and Super Heavy rocket is the world's tallest rocket, and the Starship is designed to do complex flips and maneuvers upon landing. And that's understandable when it's no stranger to explosions, ruptures, and failed landings. And many of these failures happen simply because Starship is a new system trying to do unusual things. SpaceX started testing the first prototype, Star Hopper, in mid-2019 until May of 2021, and they had the first successful landing with Starship SN15. SpaceX has come a long way since then, moving through over 10 various Starship test vehicles and tank designs to reach orbital flight. Ship 24 is now predicted to be the first Starship going to orbit, and clearly along with that it's costing a lot of Elon Musk money. Well, what's the next challenge? Well, let's talk about the development of the Raptor, and I'll tell you a story. In late 2019, in technical meetings with the Raptor engine team, Musk was pushing back on a decision his team wanted to make that would fractionally reduce the specific impulse or the ISP of the engine. He was not happy. As Musk well knows, when you build a rocket, if you're adding mass or losing performance, you're losing the battle against gravity. This is why we fight for mass and we fight for every fraction of a second of ISP, he told the team at one point, especially with a reusable upper stage, which nobody has ever succeeded in. Just FYI, it's not like they were huge idiots who wanted to throw the rockets away all the time. One of the hardest engineering problems known to man is making a reusable orbital rocket. It's stupidly difficult to have a fully reusable orbital system it would be one of the biggest breakthroughs in the history of humanity. As he delivered his speech to his engineers, Musk's mood steadily mellowed. Soon he was joking with the team. His point was made. Yes, he understood what he was asking of them. It was damn hard. It would hurt their brains. It hurt him. But they had no choice but to push through these engineering challenges, and they finally succeeded with Raptor 1. However, they don't stop developing ever increasingly the request for Raptor becomes even higher with SpaceX. For initial test flights, SpaceX will use 33 Raptor 2 engines to power the Super Heavy first stage and six on the Starship upper stages. That's a total of 39 engines. Honestly, to run a rocket with 33 powerful Raptors is an insanely difficult task. The proof is the most recent explosion, as I said at the beginning. In the big picture, still in the early days with Raptor 2, they're still learning. Heavy smoke was seen on the video camera and it appeared to shake, which Musk said was specific to the engine spin start test. Going forward, we won't do a spin start test with all 33 engines at once, the tech billionaire has said. Besides, for each test flight that either ends in the ocean with a fiery landing or with a vehicle that can't be reused, the company would lose 39 Raptor engines. That's a staggering amount of engines, both in terms of cost and lost production time. By comparison, NASA provided Aerojet Rocketdyne with $1 billion a few years ago to restart the production of Space Shuttle main engines. 
Four of these would power each Space Launch System rocket. Each individual engine on top of the startup fee NASA paid would cost an additional $100 million. For all of this money, NASA will get a maximum production of four engines a year, engines that are not reusable and largely based on technology that is decades old. Blue Origin's BE-4 engines also fall into a similar situation. This engine's been in development for more than a decade and has never made a test flight with any prototype. The production of this engine is still extremely sluggish, and up to now, Blue Origin has delayed delivery for ULA for up to five years. It's reasonable to expect that SpaceX will need about 10 test flights of Starship to get the vehicle in working order and start reusing rockets. Therefore, if SpaceX is to conduct 10 test flights of Starship in the next year, it will need something like 300 Raptor engines, which are not much smaller than the Space Shuttle's main engines. And this is why, when Musk found production issues were more severe than he realized, he sent the now infamous Black Friday email to employees last November. Musk shared that engine production is the biggest thing absorbing his time. And finally, I want to mention how difficult it is to build a fully reusable rocket. Prominent at SpaceX launch site is the giant launch tower. 140 meters high, this will be a support device that Elon Musk believes will support the landing of Starship and Super Heavy. This is considered an alternative to landing pins while increasing reusability and minimizing turnaround time between launches because Musk wants Starship to be able to turn around after only one hour. However, one can understand how hard it is to construct this launch tower, especially given the weather and climate conditions at Starbase where powerful gusts from the sea constantly blow impeding work. It's all over now, though. Importantly, the process of catching the launch tower requires a great deal of precision, requiring SpaceX to establish the most advanced navigation and control system available today. And SpaceX still has so much more to learn about Starship. The upper stage rocket need not simply fire its engines for eight minutes and then fall in the ocean like the SLS core stage. It has to be capable of making multiple relights of its engines, surviving for weeks or even months in space, and re-entering through Earth's atmosphere with minimal effects to ensure rapid reusability. And then it has to stick to a landing. This isn't an easy to-do list for something several times larger than a school bus that travels at 25 times the speed of sound. So SpaceX has a long way to go. In the words of SpaceX engineer John Insprucker, he said, We've just got to work on that landing a little bit. Yeah, that and a million other things before satellites, let alone people, fly into space on Starship. It's stupidly difficult work. But does anyone doubt SpaceX will get there? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share those comments and ideas right there in the comment section. Everyone supports motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.